ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಫನಿ ಸ್ಲ್ಯಾಶ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಅನ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ದಟ್ ಐ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೂವನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಟು ವಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಐ ಕೇಮ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಇಫ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದಿ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ of the world and i came up with this idea that the fundamental particle huh the god particle should be called the ishwarino <laughs> so the ishwarino is a very strange particle <laughs> there's only one of them but it's everywhere <laughs> all at once and it has uh, simultaneously it has zero mass and infinite mass i mean why not if if a quantum computer can be in two superimposed logical states at the same time then w- what's the problem you know hey, this is quantum right <laughs> anything is possible so the god particle the ishwarino has both zero velocity and infinite velocity huh? it exceeds the speed of light and that's also been proven by quantum entanglement that you entangle two particles and then you take them far apart and the chinese just measured the speed of quantum entanglement and it's like thousands of times the speed of light at a minimum so <laughs> hold on to your hats people maybe they'll actually prove the existence of god but i kind of doubt it because they're biased against it see the fundamental uh quality of the ishwarino is self awareness i can't say it's consciousness consciousness is a derivative of self awareness because before you can be conscious of something else there has to be something else <laughs> and in the primordial state huh which we call shivam the shaktas anyway call it shivam there is no other thing only ishwar so the ishwarino although it's capable of consciousness and we'll get to that in a minute is actually in a state of self awareness and since its only awareness is of its own self or its own awareness <laughs> there's no duality there's no duality and there's no experience either because nothing ever changes no time no space no dimension no motion no energy no nothing <laughs> there ain't not no nothing except pure being and this pure being is what we see when we meditate on the light okay the light when you meditate and you get uh in the beginning spontaneous flashes of blue and white and sometimes red light and these gradually develop into a whole field uh and this gets more and more intense until it's just like thousands and thousands of suns raise it up in the sky at the same time well this is reality uh, this is the ajatta platform and on the ajatta platform there's nothing to say because there's nothing to say it about there's only the feeling of i am or even i just i because as soon as you get into amness <laughs> that's beingness but in the ishwarino there is no beingness is only the feeling of am or i I'll get it straight here soon. 
The Ishwarino is aware of its own awareness, isn't it? This is non-duality. Non-duality comes when a particle moves through a medium causing waves. Okay, how does it do that? Through something called turbulence. Turbulence is uh, an understood phenomenon in physics, but it's not a completely understood phenomenon. There was just an article on that the other day, too, from MIT, no less, that one of the great frontiers of physics right now is turbulence. They'll never get it. <laughs> because uh, we discussed a long time ago, about a year ago, the, uh, the physics of the vortex. Uh, vortex theory is very interesting because when you have turbulence, you have vortexes. Not only you have waves, uh, but the waves give rise to vortexes. And these vortexes revolve in a small space with a small amount of, of mass or even a negligible uh, zero mass just energy moving in a circle, that's all you need to create mass. And so we use the ocean wave as an example. When the, when the wave is traveling through the ocean smoothly, then uh, you can be swimming and you just bob up and down with the waves. Huh? But when the wave gets near the shore, the decreasing depth adds friction, which causes turbulence, which makes the wave break. See, first it forms a vortex and then it breaks. And what happens? If you're standing there and this breaking wave hits you, it feels like a ton of bricks. In other words, the vortex creates mass. There, I just solved one of the most difficult, outstanding problems in physics with this concept of the Ishwarino. So the Ishwarino first creates a medium. Let's call it space, for a lack of better word. We don't really have a term for it. Well, we do, pradhan in Sanskrit. So then the Ishwarino moves through the pradhan. And this moving, like a boat moves through water, it creates waves. And this is the energy. This is the light that permeates the universe. Huh? Energy is a wave. A wave is a vibration, okay? A vibration creates vortexes, which, are, which we experience as the creation, the world, beings, objects, action, and so forth. And so what do you have here? You have the Ishurino creating the Shaktini. <laughs> The Shaktini is the first particle <laughs> born from the Ishwarino uh, by its simple movement through the medium of the Pradhan. So these are, the, these are the highest secrets in Vedic philosophy. They're really easy to understand. You just have to have an open mind. So <laughs> these waves are spreading out, uh, waves of creation and creating many, many vortexes of energy. And that's the world that we experience now. So how does this mm, Shakti manifest itself? Again, in the form of light, but not the light that we see, the light that we are. See, when we see light in meditation, that's not something outside of ourselves shining at us. Rather, that is our light being reflected back to us by the purified mind. What is the purified mind? The mind devoid of desire. The mind which is not going out. The mind which has turned inward. We went all over this in the Secret of the Golden Flower series, so I'm not going to go through it again. 
But that's why we feel joy when we meditate and we see the light. Okay, so the Ishwara creates the Shakti and then the Shakti goes and radiates outwardly in the form of light, illuminating everything. And that's why we chant the Gayatri Mantra uh, to the Savitr. Savitr, not Savitur. Uh, Savitu is the sun god. But Savitr is the Shakti of the sun god, which is the same Shakti, the same light uh, that Ishwara creates when he plows through the Pradhan. So this is the sport of God. This is how he and she create the universe. So you see, she, the Shakti, is a latent within the Ishwara. And as soon as the Ishwara moves at all, but this is actually an action of Shakti. And not only that, by this motion, all the other motions in the universe are created, uh, spreading out like the wake of a boat. So this is how it's done, folks. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you a secret. This is the same knowledge, the same esoteric principle discussed by the Buddha in his Paticca Samuppada, which very few people understand including Buddhists, or maybe especially Buddhists. And uh, the uh, Thai school, which has permeated everything with its total misunderstanding uh, of Paticca Samuppada, because it's completely academic. See, about 500 years ago, there was a big debate in Buddhism about which is more important to uh, safeguard the teaching for the future. The... Uh, the knowledge-based approach or the practice-based approach. And unfortunately, the scholars won. Well, scholars generally do win debates. You know? And the practitioners were sidelined. And today they're almost non-existent. And you have a Buddhism which is totally academic, which means it's phony because nobody's actually practicing or realizing it. So... <laughs> Unfortunately, then the Buddhists themselves don't understand Paticca Samuppada, which is actually the heart of the Buddhist teaching. It's how you become enlightened. How you got into the trap and how you get out of the trap is the same information. Just one is executed in one direction, the other is executed in the other direction. That's all. The same steps, just backwards, gets you out. So, in the Vedic tradition, this is bhakti. Shiva Shakti Bhakti. And it's just as profound as quantum physics and just as complex and weird, huh? logically incomprehensible, but it works. And if you practice it, you will get the result. But you have to practice it correctly. And that means under the guidance of someone who already has the result. That's why guru is necessary. So, now it's 14 minutes in. The average view is around seven minutes. So that means most of the idiots have already checked out. This is only for you who are intelligent enough to know that I usually save the best for the last. <laughs> so we're going to have a private channel just for the people who want to get into this knowledge and practice it, the real bhakti path, uh, bhakti tantra. So this is how I became enlightened. This is how actually everyone becomes enlightened. So we're going to go into it deeply and you have to make a commitment. You're going to actually practice it and you're going to have to prove it to me. So those who have written me in the past, please write me again if you want to be included in this program. Or if you haven't gotten in touch with me, don't make a public comment on the site here. I'll delete it. But send me an email. You can find my email. It's on this channel. Take a look for it. And then 
uh, we'll include you in the program, which will also be propagated by email. Uh, I don't want to make a Facebook group. That's the last place I want to expose this knowledge to because it's very, very powerful and it can be misused. And there are rascals monitoring this channel who would misuse it and who would hurt themselves. I mean, it's very kind of my enemies <laughs> to stick so closely to me and then by making uh, critical and offensive statements about me to take on all my sinful reaction. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very kind of you. You helped me a lot. But it's not good for you. So I don't want to be responsible for people misusing this knowledge and hurting themselves. That's why I have to uh, draw a line here and say this is only for private consumption for those that I feel are ready for it. That's how it was done in the, in the past, before the printing press came along and messed everything up. Uh, guru Parampara, Guru Shishya Parampara. So, if you want to be included in the private channel, write me. Thank you very much. Om Tat Sat Aung Harihi Aung.